Hey everybody, Brett from Sardis Gaming here, back with another episode of our Expeditions Viking Let's Play. So in the previous episode, we left off about to engage Asleif in Mortal Kombat for the title of Thane. However, between this episode and the last one that you guys saw, I recorded another video where I learned firsthand just what happens when uh, you try to take on Asleif without using any dishonorable methods. And also, I learned what happens when you lose to him. So now that you guys have seen that, um, we're going to go ahead and jump back to the save that I made um, in the second episode, where uh, we are still able to do a couple other quests to make this fight a little bit easier, because as I'm not rolling a... Uh, very, very one-dimensionally specced warrior, I just do not have the strength to defeat him, and so I'm going to need a little bit of help. Uh, I think we'll take on at least one of these, if not both, but uh, we could certainly use anything that will be to our benefit, so I'm going to go ahead and do that. While we're heading down to the marshes, I just want to remind you guys to hit that like button if you are enjoying this series so far and you'd like to see more Expeditions Viking, and don't forget to subscribe as well. It's the best way to help the channel grow and the best way to follow along with this series as it plays out. Uh, did I go the wrong way here? No. Where is it? Oh, down there. Okay. Um, I guess we'll cross this bridge then. I think that's where we're supposed to be headed. And that looks to be Hulda's shack, but this lady over here had a quest marker, so let's talk to her. So... Roskva. I'm going to go with Roskva, but that O with the line through it makes me think that's probably not right. The witch's apprentice is tending to the candles around an old tree. She stands when she sees you, squinting through damp locks of raven black hair that droop in front of her face. Why are you here? I'm here to see Hulda. She fidgets with the candle in her hand, picking at the wax with a long nail. Are you sure? Today isn't one of her good days. She and I have that in common, then. An uncertain smile crosses her lips. How's that? Seems like half the clan wants me dead. Her voice betrays no hint of interest. I wouldn't take it personally. There's always a power grab when a thane snuffs it. What would you know of such matters? She looks away. The machinations of ambitious men are well within the purview of a witch. Her eyes meet yours again, this time through a shrewd squint. But you're not here for advice, are you? You're here for poison. Good guess. She smiles, in much the same way that a cat might smile at a gull. If Hulda is too difficult, come talk to me again. I might be of some help. Okay, well that's good to know. Uh, where is Hulda? I don't see a marker. Is she leading me there? Let's take a look. Uh, Hulda. Oh, we have to go to the witch's hut. Oh, she's leading me there, okay. She just kind of took a roundabout path. Oh, she's calling her for me. Perfect. Alright, let's give uh, old Hulda a talking to. The old witch emerges from her burrow, supported by her brooding apprentice. Her knees shake with each slow step, and she wears an expression of deep concern. She stops a few yards outside the hut and blinks at your confusion. What are you doing home so soon? Did you decide not to go? I haven't gone anywhere. She takes an unsteady step forward. I made an offering to Thor when you left, and that same night he struck the big willow with a thunderbolt. He brought you back safely, just as he showed me that you, or that he would. Roskva speaks softly to the old woman. This is Avind, the son of Grim and Astrid. Do you remember him? The old witch blinks again. She looks at Roskva for a long moment, as though searching for something in the girl's eyes. Then she shakes her head, annoyed. Of course I remember. Don't give me that look like I wouldn't remember. It sounded like she was mistaking us for our father. Her attention turns back to you, but her voice is an impatient bark now. Why are you here? I need help with the duel. She holds up a hand, one long, dirty, frayed nail pointed straight at you. I told you that you would need the mixture, but you wouldn't take it. Reskva's tone is cautious. Hulda. 
Venom sizzles beneath the old witch's curt admonishment. Quiet, girl. For a long moment, nobody speaks. Holda's eyes bore into you long past the point of discomfort. Then they seem to glaze over. I need you to make me a poison. Her eyes wander aimlessly. Of course I'll help you. I always do what I can for you. Last time, I gave a good, fat rabbit to Thor that he might watch over you on your journey. That very night, the big willow was struck by a thunderbolt. The apprentice tugs gently at your crone's arm. You already said that, Holda. The old woman grabs Ruskva's hand and digs her nails into the underside of the girl's wrist. She winces visibly. Don't lie, you useless cow. I know what I said. I'm not an idiot. You're not well today. Your memory... The old hag screams, so spittle flies from her mouth. Get out of here. Go. I don't want to see you here again. Don't you ever come back here, you lying little goat. Ruskva sighs, defeated, and walks away. On her way past you, she pauses and mumbles so only you can hear. That's the third time today she's banished me forever. She'll call me back when she wets her bed again. Sounds like things are pretty rough over here. Holda stares after her apprentice through narrow eyes as she leaves. Uh, you really shouldn't talk to her that way. She's out to make me look like an imbecile so she can be the new witch. Don't listen to a word she says. There's nothing wrong with me. Hmm. I think we're done here. I really do hope you get well. She shouts after you as you leave. There's nothing wrong with me. It's just that evil girl. Fine, get out of here. Don't you ever come back. Well, if we ever need her help again, hopefully she doesn't remember this. But it seems like uh, her assistant here is going to be a lot more help to us. Roshka's voice is a timbled... Is <laughs> timbled? What? Uh, her voice is a timid mumble when you find her again. I'm sorry you had to see her this way. She's just having a bad day. Uh, you have nothing to apologize for. It's kind of you to say that, but I grieve for Holda. She's a wise woman, with a lifetime of knowledge of the plants, the gods, and the spirits. I hate to see her mind unravel like this. If you'd caught her on a better day, I know she could have helped you with your duel. Hmm. Well, how much of that knowledge has she passed on to you? She musters a half-smile. Holda has taught me a lot of herbs and mushrooms, of how to make pain go away, or how to cause it. She sticks an arm deep into her knapsack and pulls out a small jar. Jar, excuse me. It's a powder. If he ingests it, if he ingests this in the morning, he'll barely be able to stand at noon. Well, how will I get him to eat it? I'll bring him a concoction and tell him it'll make him stronger and sure the gods will favor him tomorrow. Won't that make him seek revenge on you? Her lips curl into a sardonic smile. If you win, you can protect me. So please make sure you win. Okay, well, there is the poison. So that was an interesting little uh, bit there. Let's, um... I don't know if I'm... I'm definitely not headed the right way here, but let's make our way back up to the village where we will talk to the trapper and see if she's got anything that could help us out. Why am I so lost here? What's going on? Um, oh, we're all turned around. That's why. Of course, I was headed... I was headed back west toward the bridge, but of course I turned the camera to where west was north. So, uh, right, we'll head this way. And, um, I could head inside, or I can go talk to Sigrid. Let's go talk to her. I don't know if we're even going to need a trap after he's been poisoned, but who knows? Well, I'll do it just so you guys can see what the conversation options are. Sigrid is the clan's best hunter, and is married to the other full-time hunter, uh, Leo. I'm going to go with that. <laughs> she bows her head respectfully as you approach her. Well met, Avon. I witnessed Aslaif's challenge. Is there anything I can do to help? Are you on my side in this dispute? Aslaif is a good man, honorable and dutiful. His family is always fair in their dealings. But your father was lax in his rule, and I admired that. He may not have built a stronger and a stronger and feel for... <sighs> okay, one more time. <laughs> he may not have built a strong and fearful clan, but he respected us and put great trust in us all. I hope you'll continue that legacy, and I know Aslaif certainly wouldn't. Hmm. My mother suggested you might have a few tricks to aid me in this duel. Tricks? Hmm. Perhaps there's one thing I can do. Your uncle Grimulf told me a story once. He was with Grimm in Greatland to fight for Sigurd Hring. Is that Hring? I'm gonna go with that. I'm going with like the super like Anglo pronunciations for everything, but uh, I, I know most of those are not correct, so again, feel free to correct me on those guys. It's just 
I have no experience with a lot of these words, and so I don't know what to make of them most of the time. And he was tasked to ambush a group of mercenaries riding in to reinforce the enemy. According to Grimwolf, your father wanted to split up the riders with a surprise attack, so he had the idea of, spending, of suspending a strong net above the path and running the rope across the ground concealed by branches. When the first horse stepped on the rope, it came loose and dropped the net down onto the rider, tangling him up and causing him to fall off the horse. Hmm. I don't think Azleif would be dumb enough to fall for that. It hinges on whether he expects a trap and how well it's hidden. I know how to hide a trap well enough from anyone. Uh, let's try it then. Good, I'll start preparing. The worst thing that can happen is that you'll have to fight him like normal. That's true. And we kind of look weaker for having to have needed a trap, but as I showed you guys, uh, looking weak and getting beaten, you know, I'd rather look weak than get my ass kicked, so. Um, right, I guess we'll go rest and then we will start the duel. And uh, I imagine, based on the choices we've made here, the dialogue that we saw at the end of the last episode will have changed slightly. So we'll go through it again, just to be sure. Okay, so let's hop in bed. And we'll end the feast. You come to the, again this word, the prosaically named... Hongang Island on the following day, rowing one of the clan's small boats in the company of Nephia and Ketil. Sigrid and Leo greet you there, having come out in advance to set the stakes that define the arena. The huntress points to a small patch of branches on the ground. I've fastened the rope over there. The log is well concealed among the branches overhead, but try to keep Aslave's attention on you when he comes. Uh, where is she referring to? small patch of branches on the ground. I, I, I assume I'll be able to tell when I look at it. If he comes, perhaps he thought better of it and decided to stay home. Nephew nudges Kettle between the ribs. Perhaps Thor will happen to drop Mjolnir from the sky and coincidentally crush Aslave's boat on the way here. If he doesn't show up, I'll have to exile him. Kettle gives you a wry smile. That would be a good resolution to this whole mess, but he'll be here. The man has the stubbornness of a mule, as well as its sense. Your challenger arrives a short time later, accompanied by two other young men from his side of the family. The same companions he sat with at your feast. Uh, branches. Is she referring to these, possibly? I don't see any, like, obvious traps. Uh, maybe we won't see it until the fight starts. Asleif looks dizzy and weary. He has dark rings under his eyes. He doesn't even look like he doesn't even look at you as he walks into the ring. His voice is a hoarse bark. I'm here to fight you as agreed. Are you ready? Nephia addresses you, but keeps her eyes on Aslave as she speaks. Avon, I volunteer to fight in your place. Uh, again, if you're not a warrior type character or somebody who's more of like a healer or whatever, this would be a good uh, point for you to let her jump in for you because she is at least sort of a warrior type. But uh, being a warrior type myself, I am obviously going to uh, fight him man to man here. So your offer humbles me, but this is my fight. She nods gravely and takes a step back. I understand. Good luck, Avon. You walk into the ring opposite Asleaf, and Sigurd motions to your opponent. Sigrid, excuse me. As a challenger in this dispute, it falls on you to recite the rules of the duel. He clears his throat and impatiently recites the clan's traditional rules for single combat. I, Asleif, son of Grimvard, have challenged Avin, son of Grim, for the right to rule our clan. The winner shall sit as Thane of Skirin and reside in its longhouse. He shall receive no other award beyond this. Should he survive, he who is defeated may swear fealty to the winner, or his life is forfeit. If either of us falls in the duel, their bodies shall be buried here. All weapons are permitted. The duel will end when either warrior is dead or incapable of continuing to fight. He gives a final respectful nod and brandishes his weapon. As the challenged, the first to strike is yours to make. The first strike is yours to make. Okay, so there's the trap. Yeah, it's actually fairly obvious. Um, I'm going to stand my ground right here then and let him come to me. I will, however, use my ready ability so that I hit him when he steps in here. So we'll call that our turn. He's going to step into the trap and he gets snared. 
Um, oh, I didn't attack him. Interesting. So that was kind of a waste. Let's see. We did get through his shield there, so that's nice. Uh, we'll end our turn on that note. Oh, that was my turn. Okay. Or that was his turn. Excuse me. So now that it's uh, my turn again, so let's take another stab. His shield so far has not done a whole lot for him. Um, he just critted us there, but for a lot less than he was doing in my previous fight. Um, the first time I fought him, that you guys didn't get to see other than that little uh, clip, he was dealing on average about 40 to 45 damage per hit, where I was doing about half that per hit. So uh, things are definitely looking a lot better than they were. Like, significantly better. The trap, I don't know. I don't know if that was all that necessary. It really just basically gave me an extra turn and took one from him. But, I mean, every little bit counts. The poison seems to be um, the better of the two. Like, if you were only going to pick one. Did we just kill him? I hope we didn't kill him. No, he's getting up. Okay. You've been keeping your skills sharp, even without your father around to train you. He trained us both. What do you even have against him? He was a great warrior. Like everyone else, I respected him for that. But if the king should raise the leading our army tomorrow, how many able-bodied warriors could our clan muster? A dozen? Half the women in the clan are widows, and Grimm's foolhardy exp expeditions are the cause of it. He bangs his weapon against his second shield and gives you a somber nod. Okay, well, let's meet him about halfway here. Uh, I'll step into roughly this spot. And then I'm going to set up for another uh, attack of opportunity. When he moves in, we should get a swing at him. There we go. I think the trap interrupted it last time. Yeah, he's hitting a lot less hard than he was. So we'll go in for another 24 damage there. Um, end our turn. He seems to be ignoring our shield quite a bit. So I'm just going to keep going in for it. I do have abilities that allow me to regenerate my shield. That's this blue bar here. But as of yet, since he hasn't done any damage to it, I have no need of using it. Also, we can heal people, but not ourselves. Uh, this only applies to other characters. You can't use it on your own character. So that's something to keep in mind as well. Um, tactical move. No, we'll just keep attacking. Looks like one more will do it. And we block that one. So see, that bar goes down. If I use this ability, it will regenerate. But, uh, no, no need. So no new injuries on our side. Um, we will have to fight him one more time. As Leif's second shield crumbles off the grip, dismayed, he heads back to the boat to fetch his last shield. You are nearly as good as Grimm. If you should win this, I hope you'll be a better thane. Hmm. And I would hope to serve with you as my house, Carl. He nods without hesitation. My honor bids me to, but if I should win, you may serve as mine. Tell me, how do you plan to govern us? Hmm. Let's see. Um, strengthen our defenses, rebuild old alliances, um, be as lax as possible, or finding a great kingdom across the sea. I feel like building up our defenses would be better first. He was talking about how we have very few fighting men in this clan. And so I think uh, basically getting back to the point where we could defend ourselves is going to be the best thing for us. So we've become weak and we have many enemies. The defenses must be strengthened. Then you are wiser than your father. If you win, I shall gladly serve you. But enough talk. Let us finish this. Okay, well, we'll move a little bit closer to him. Did it reset me back to... I think it did reset me back. I'll move to here. And I could use, like, Caltrops or something, but as this is going pretty straightforward, I don't think I'll bother. Those seem like they would be better served in, in a fight where we have potential to lose. It's, it's pretty incredible how much easier this fight is when you've poisoned him. Like, like significantly easier. Um, I was doing everything I could to win and still losing pretty handily the last time I fought him and now I'm not really having to you know do all that much other than just straight up attack and uh, still still hanging in there pretty well I mean we haven't lost a single fight yet and just like he 
Just like he does, you get three, uh, three lives as well in this fight. Um, let's see. Toggle non-lethal attacks. Should I do that? Can I even do that? It looks like it's already toggled. Okay. I just want to make sure we don't kill him or something like that. That would be horrible. And sort of defeat the purpose on why I re-rolled this. Because um, if you, you know, saw the beginning of the episode there, he does die if you beat him. Or if he beats you, excuse me. So there he is defeated. Your challenger struggles to get back on his feet, but he leaves his weapon in the mud. In the end, he settles for just sitting on his knees before you, his head hung in a signal of defeat. You got R Roskva to poison me, didn't you? This disease was all you're doing. He shakes his head weakly. And the trick with the net. How could I miss that rope? I've never seen such a trap used in a fight. I don't appreciate such trickery, but I can't deny their effectiveness. Though I'd prefer to bow to a man who could defeat me fairly, I'm at your mercy. See, I feel kind of bad now. Like, he he was the better warrior. We just used everything at our disposal to uh, get the advantage where he decided to fight us straight up. But obviously, he, would, he was going to win in a fight like that, so... We had to use our wits to get the better of him. If you'll accept my surrender, I pledge myself to your service. So you can exile him or execute him, but I will gladly accept his, uh, his surrender. So I will accept your pledge. Some unusual mixture of sadness and relief washes over him. He holds your gaze for a long moment. Then he seems to get back some energy the duel took out of him, and he stands. You show me great honor. I hope my challenge won't linger in the air between us. I want you to know that you can depend on me from now on, fully. Kettle extends a hand to Asleaf, who shakes it hesitantly. Glad to have you with us, you big lug. You put up a good fight. I'll be glad to have you on our side. Nephia reluctantly shakes Asleaf's hand as well. You were a fool to challenge Avind, but I hope you learned your lesson now. I too am glad to have you with us. So he's part of our group now. Um, oh cool, so he's following us. Let's check out his stats, because I didn't get to see them last time. So he's 86636. He's actually built really similar to our character, just with more strength. I wonder why. I wonder if that's why he was doing so much more damage. Or if the game intentionally makes him more difficult for that fight. Uh, block chance is 30. Mine's 47. For 47%, it certainly doesn't seem like I block like one out of every two. It seems like I block a lot less than that. Um, let's see. We all have some XP to spend. No, I have 17. So I can upgrade a few things. Um, let's see, where are we at with this? With the shields? Shield rank 3, that would give me protect. You get the status effect protecting, enemies are stopped upon leaving adjacent hexes. Okay, so I could do that, or I could get a little bit more sword damage. I think that would be really useful actually, so let's spend a couple XP there. And then uh, probably some passives, because 5 is not a whole lot. Sneak attack, keen eye. We need a perception of six, though. Avenger. Dodge, huh? Oh, we have dodge. Whoops. What is this one? Evade. What do we have here? Fencer. There's no description for those yet. Again, this game is very much a work in progress, but... Uh, obviously, still playable and still quite enjoyable. So this is Relentless, 5% chance to get one extra action when using normal attacks. And then we have Quick Feet, which lets us move around an enemy without incurring attacks of opportunity as long as we don't disengage. That could be useful, but I don't have 6, X, X, six SP to spend. Um, let's see, increases range damage. Yeah, unfortunately there's no tooltip for this one yet. Plus 3 crit chance. Good Patient lets me be healed easier. If we get another healer, that would be really useful, so I think we'll take it. And that leaves me with two, which isn't going to be enough to really do anything else. Ketzel has leveled up as well, and does he have enough for aim shot? That would be fantastic. He does. And let's see, this was three, right? So we'll give him that as well, in case we ever need to heal him. Asleif has 11, so let's see, he is currently using... He's got one in shield, two in sword. How much for the next one in shield? It would be nine. It would up his block chance. If he's going to be our primary tank, that would be a pretty good ability to have. Also, good patient would be a, a good one for him to have as well because he would be receiving the majority of our heals. She's got 21 XP. I wonder what we could uh, 
throw that into. What is this? Extend. Attack a target three hexes away, but it's 75% damage. That's still pretty useful, I would think, so I'm going to take that. Then, um, what are our other options? Dual wielding. Faint. I don't know what that... I forget what that does. But uh, I think passive skills are going to be better served here, so we'll take this one. And maybe hardened? How much do we need for that? Six? We only have three. Relentless... Evade. I think Evade would be a good one for her. Okay, so that just leaves Asleaf. Who do we want, or sorry, what do we want to give to him? His perception is not high enough for that. I should give Kettle that next, because he, yeah, he's got 10 perception. She's got 6, so she could use that as well. Um, I think Good Patient would be a good idea. And then we'll give him... I don't have enough for another one in shields or swords. Maybe I should save up for shield too. I think I will. I think I will. So we need to row back to the homestead. Let's go ahead and do that. The short boat ride back is as uneventful as the trip out. Hongang Island is cl clearly visible from the shore outside Skirn. You return victorious. Nephia secures her shield on her back. I'm glad that's dealt with. What's next? We'll have to do something about Erling Thorgislison. <laughs> that name, I swear. As long as he lives, his family poses a threat. Well, we'll head there immediately then. Alright, so it looks like we have our next objective. We're going to go clean some house and deal with the father of the sons who decided to threaten us at our own father's uh, funeral feast. But uh, we're out of time for the day, so as always, thank you guys so much for watching. I had a great time playing some Expeditions Viking with you guys, and I look forward to seeing you back here for the next episode.